Hello friends, welcome. I'm your friend, your host, Roy. Today we are talking about series one, where we are discussing real numbers. This is episode number seven, and we are going to continue our conversation of how to solve number property related questions using Euclid's division lemma. So friends, now let's zoom past uh, some of the things that we have already covered, such as by now we know what is exactly meant by Euclid's division lemma. Now let's get to this point where, like we talked about in the last video, that there are different types of number property questions that you may be getting in your tests and exams. We did take a look at this particular type and this particular type in our last video. So what is this? Show every positive even integer is of the form 2m for some integer m. This type had show any positive odd integer is of the form like this. Today we are going to take a look at show that square of any positive integer is of the form this. So what is the difference between in terms of the type for between question 1, question 2 and question 3? If you notice for question 1 and question 2, we are directly talking about a positive in this case, an even integer, and here, a positive odd integer. In this particular case, which we are going to take a look at in this video, here we are not talking about the integer itself, we are talking about the square of the integer. Similarly, you may be asked that show the cube of an integer is of a certain form. So friends, let's find out how do we solve these kind of questions. And these are really head scratcher, and you will see why you know, how do we go ahead when we look to actually solve it, you will be really scratching your head and, and you will see how strange some of these questions can be. So, let's write the question. Show that square of a pos any positive integer is of the form 3p or 3p plus 1 for some integer p. So, the first thing that we have to find out is we need to first find a general form for the integer itself before we go and finding out the form for the square. And the second step, as you can imagine, is nothing but finding the general form for the square. So first we have to find out the general form for the integer. And then we have to find out the general form for the square of the integer. So in the question one and question two, remember this is question three, the the actual question finished at this level. We did not, we just had to form a general form of an integer. We didn't have to find the square or the cube, their general form. So let's find out. So what we're going to do is this. So we will start out by writing the Euclid's dilemma. A equals to BQ plus R, right? Now, what will be the value of B here? So, just the way we did in the last two questions, we are going to assume that b is equal to 3. So, we will take b equal to 3. And because we are dealing with, we have to eventually find out the square, the general form for the square. So, for now, we will stick to variable q and r. Remember like how I showed you in the question 1 and 2 that for the variable q, we will use the, the, the general uh, variable, uh, whatever is given. But because we need to find it, we need to find general form for the square, we will not use the variable p here. We are going to stay with q. So let's write this. So if we go with b equal to 3, so we have a equal to b times q plus r. Now, so what will be the value of r? We know that q, which is the quotient, is any integer greater than or equal to 0. And similarly, r will be greater than or equal to 0, but less than 3. This means the possible values of r will be, what are the possible values? It will be so let's write it. So R can actually have, R will be equal to either 0, 1, or 2. 
So now let's write out the Euclid's general uh, Euclid's dilemma in for each of the values of r. So we will have a equal to 3q plus 0 which is equal to 3q then we will have a equal to 3q plus 1 r equal to 1 and then we will have a equal to 3q plus 2 so friends at this point we have figured out the general form remember the general form for the integer itself so a can be 3q a can be 3q plus 1 a can be 3q plus 2 but our question states we need to find out the general form of square of the integer now what we have to do is we have to square a we have to square a so because a can be any of this we have to take each condition one by one and then we need to figure out we have to then square each one of them separately so we have to do this we have to do this and we have to do this so we have to expand each one separately so I think this one is little straightforward so let's do this here so if you have a square equal to 3 q square so that we can write as uh, let's do it here equal to so we can write this as 9 q square or this is equal to 3 multiply by 3 q square so you will be wondering why did I write it in this form right so essentially what I have is I have a square equal to 3 q square the reason I wrote it this way is remember we have to show that the square square of positive integer is either in this form or it is in this form so if I write three times something now this can be some integer p so a square is 3p where p is nothing but 3 times q square right if you have if you take uh, any uh, values for q q is nothing but q is nothing but any integer greater than or equal to 0 so for all values of q you will get some value of p right so this square a square can be written as 3 times p where p is a p sum integer now let's take a look at what about the other two forms right now let's do each one separately so i have a square equal to now we have 3q plus 1 square this is simply in the form of a plus b whole square so you can actually write this as 3q square plus 2ab which is 3q times 1 plus 1 square which you can write this as this will be 9 q square plus 6 q plus 1 or I can write this as I from these two I can take 3 common and I can write this as 3 3 is a 9 q square plus 2 q plus 1 so why did I take 3 common from these two and not 3 q common again if you notice here I am trying to get closer to this form so in this case I can write this as this can be equal to 3 p plus 1 because for any values for q this term which is in the parenthesis in the bracket for different values of q you will get 
unique values of p right so q equal to 1 you will have some value q equal to 2 you will get different value q equal to 3 you will get different value so i can say p it can be this right and then i realize that my square of my positive integer is taking a form 3p plus 1 where p is nothing but this term so let's take a look at the last uh, condition which is like a square what if, if this is equal to 3q plus 2 so if you square this and again just going by the same way we can write this as 9 square 9q square plus 2 3 is a 6 times 2 is 12 12q plus 2 square is 4 now this i can rewrite this as here i want to expand 4 as 3 plus 1 so let's write it here so i can write this as 9 q square plus 12 q plus 3 plus 1. Why did I break the number 4 in this fashion? Again you will see I am trying to get to 3p plus 1 so I have got my plus 1 and now what I can do is I can write this as I can take from all these terms I can take 3 common then what I have is 3q square plus 3 4s are 12, 4q plus 1, right, for this 3, and then I have plus 1. So in this case, in this case of a square, I have 3 times this term. And again, this term. Uh, please note that for unique values of Q, you will get specific value for this, this term, right? So if I say P is equal to this, then I can write this as 3P plus 1. So where again, P will have unique values depending on values for Q, P will get unique values. So the reason friends, this is a head scratcher is that I think as we are noticing, in the first case, I had a square as 3 times 3q square. There, this was the value of p, 3q square. In this case, in the second case, 3q square plus 2q is the value of p. And in the last case, this is a value of p. So what is important to understand is that now whenever you put any unique value for q in each of these cases, this is case if you call it case 1, this is case 2, and this is case 3. In each of the case 1, 2, or 3, for any unique value of q in each of these cases, whether here or here or here, P will have a unique value and the value of P solely depends on the value of Q. It doesn't depend on anything else. So in each of these cases, we can say that A square is definitely of the form 3P, 3P plus 1 and 3P plus 1, where P is any integer. So friends, now let us uh, let me show you how you will write it uh, when it comes to your uh, tests and exams. So you will start by doing something like this let a be a positive integer and b equals 3 then by euclid's division algorithm we can write a equals 3q plus r for some integer q greater than or equal to 0 and r is greater than or equal to 0 less than 3 so r can have value 0 1 and 2 so my three equations are a equals 3q a equals 3q plus 1 a equals 3q plus 2 then what we have is so first we take a look first we take a equals 3q for some integer q then if you square a 3q square 9q square and 3 times 3q square where we can write this as 3 times p where p equals 3q square right and like i explained for if p is any integer 
if for specific values of p, you will get unique values of this term. So we can say p equals this. Then for the second and the third case, second a equals 3q plus 1. Then a squared is this. We can expand this to say 3p plus 1. In this case, p is actually this value. And the reason p is this value is again, you this value totally depends on q. So different values of q will give me unique values of p. And if you take the last uh, form, a equals 3q plus 2, here again, we have shown we can write this as 3p plus 1, where p will be of this form. So friends, this is how we say in each case, a squared is either in the form 3p or 3p plus 1 for some integer p. So friends, I know like this is a little bit strange, uh, but this is how you solve these kind of questions. If they would have asked you to show that instead of showing square, if the question is show that cube of a positive integer is of some particular form, then you will start out first by doing the general form of the integer itself and then you will have to cube each of the different forms and then show that each of the different forms are indeed uh, can be expressed in the form which is asked in the question. So friends, in the next video, we are going to start by taking a look at the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. Thanks for watching.